Welcome back. Last year, we reviewed the A500 Mini. As it was based on the computer I owned as a kid, things became a bit emotional. In today's video, we'll review the Mini of another console I had while growing up. The Super Nintendo. Japanese version. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe on. The case looks like this. This is not the Super Nintendo Mini, this is the Super Famicom. With different lines and box art. Why are there no white lines? The box has six sides. One's blue, red, green, and yellow. The colors of the Super Nintendo. On the back of the box we have the games included. A few of them I had as a kid. Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, Super Street Fighter 2, and Donkey Kong Country. But how playable are these for the non-Japanese gamer? One nice thing to know is it comes with two controllers. Sweet. Let's see what's inside. By flaps, she needs to spend some time in the sun. Inside, we get a mini USB cable for power, the Super Famicom Mini, HDMI cable, controller, another controller. In this bag, we have a quick start guide, fully in Japanese. And this guarantee. Let's take a look at the controller. Perfection. The cable runs 140 centimeters in length, which is slightly longer than the original. It's a little disappointing that this is not USB, so you won't be using this on any other platform, unless you have an adapter. Let's have a listen. Honestly, this feels like the perfect Super Nintendo controller. Let's compare it to the original. This feels really close. The shoulder buttons of the new console feel a bit more clickier, but the original console has been used a lot more, so wear is probably a major factor. Let's have a look at this Mini. Very much like the A500 Mini, this looks beautiful. The cartridge slot doesn't open, but everything else is bang on. Here's a power switch, reset button, and decoration. Underneath, we got nothing. This front here is a cover for the controller ports. There they are. For player one and player two. And on the back we have ports for HDMI and mini USB for power. It's time for the size comparison. This Mini is completely dwarfed by the real Super Famicom and it's roughly the same size of one of his games. And from Europe, a NES Classic. Sneaking up from behind, the A500 Mini. Let's add a handheld to the mix, the RG35XX. And finally, a Roy Bush tea bag. Yummy. This Super Famicom Mini is four Roy Bush tea bags big. Very nice. While this console is very small, the timeless design still looks great today. Let's see how long it takes to turn on. I have a joke. How many tickles does it take to turn on an anime girl? Tentacles. Around seven seconds, and we're straight into the games list. Along the top, we got some settings. Analog TV, 4.3, and Pixel Perfect. Along the bottom, we have frames that fill a blank area to the side of the screen. Let's have a look at the options now. Analog TV setting softens the image and adds scan lines. The 4.3 setting gives us nice looking pixels, and this is looking really good. And pixel perfect. This might look good on a very wide monitor. And here are the frame options. They're okay, but I wish they'd have added some game specific bezels. Let's move on to the cog. Top we got my play demo, auto play demo, and this one's to reduce screen burn. It'll dim the screen if you don't touch the controller for a few minutes. Last option is factory reset. Here we have licensing documents, things like that. And then help. If you need help, QR code. If we push select, we can sort the games. For two players, recently played, amount of times played, release date, make a name, and game title. Choosing one, we'll start the game. To get back to the games list, we can push the reset button on the console. If we push down, we have four save states per game. 
We can use these at any point, or we can use the regular save game that is inbuilt into each game. There is also a replay feature. With this we can watch our last minute of gameplay, but if you want to jump in, you can just press start and carry on. So, how is the games list? And more importantly, which are playable if you don't understand Japanese? Let's find out with some gameplay. First up, Contra Spirits. Star Fox. Mitegero, Mitegero. Rockman X. Ganbare Goemon. Yuki Hime Kyushutsu Yamaki. Super Street Fighter 2, the new challenges. Super Donkey Kong. Super Formation Soccer. Chou Makaibara Panel de Pont Fire Emblem Monshou no Nazo Final Fantasy VI. Hoshi no Kirby Super Deluxe. Kirby seriously sucks. A personal favorite, F-Zero. Super Mario Kart Super Mario RPG Super Mario World Super Mario Yoshi Island Super Metroid The last Metroid is in captivity Second Enter to 2 Zelda no Dendetsu, Kamigami no Triforce.
So there's nothing really new here worth getting over the US or European Super Nintendo, outside the cosmetic design. But we're pleased to say that you can even add your own English games using Hackchi, and this also opens up the ability to even run emulators from other systems. Let's get to the pros and the cons. This thing is high quality from the get-go. Video image is good, and even the life bar in Rockman isn't oddly scaled. User interface is good, and hack-g. Onto the things we don't like, the controller cable is quite short, and it's a shame to see limited language options when most of the games are really small in size. So, do we recommend this? Yes, but get one in your own language, unless you're comfortable with modding. To finish off, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We cannot thank you enough for your continued support. Here at Team Pandori, we make video reviews, guides, and fix cheap arcade boxes. If you want to support us, please jump on. Or a simple like and subscribe will do us a solid. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! What is the game day of the tentacle-like? I am John Lou.